Richard Branson, Michael Phelps, Justin Timberlake, James Carville. Wait a minute. Where are the women? Greta Gerwig, Lisa Ling, Audra McDonald, Simone Biles. That sounds like a list of highly successful titans in a variety of industries. They all have ADHD, but you don't hear much about that now, do you? You know what else you don't hear about? Are the 43% of people with ADHD who are in excellent mental health. Why aren't we talking about them and what they're doing right? I'm your host, Tracy Atsuka, and that's exactly what we do here. I'm a lawyer, not a doctor, a lifelong student, and now the author of my new book, ADHD for Smartass Women. I'm also a certified ADHD coach and the creator of Your ADHD Brain is A-OK, a a patented system that helps ADHD women just like you get unstuck and fall in love with their brilliant brains. Here, we embrace our too-muchness and we focus on our strengths. My guests and I credit our ADHD for some of our greatest gifts. And to those who still think they're too much, too impulsive, too scattered, too disorganized, I say no one ever made a difference by being too little. Oh, hello, hello, hello. I am your host, Tracy Otsuka. Thank you so much for joining me here for ADHD for Smartass Women. Yes, our book, ADHD for Smartass Women, is finally out, and you can order it. Please order it at ADHDforsmartwomen.com forward slash book to get bonuses like a master series with me that starts with teaching you all about what ADHD looks like in women. You can also order the book at your favorite bookseller or just go down and pick it up and then add the order number whatever's on your receipt, to the form on our book page and get the bonuses as well. You know, it's been so exciting to deliver the strength-focused message that turns most everything you know about ADHD on its head and see it give birth and move into the world. I'm just honored to be leading this mission of focusing the spotlight on you, brilliant ADHD women. Bar none, I have never met an ADHD woman that wasn't brilliant at something. But you already know that, right? So this is not just about turning pages in a book. It is literally about changing chapters in women's lives and completely rewriting the ending. It's about showcasing the strengths of brilliant ADHD women. And the truth is, you know this, we are all brilliant at something. Every last one of us. You know, right before the holidays, I interviewed nine real life ADHD women in one day. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but it was pretty overwhelming. Not only did it take me a whole day to record, but then it took me a whole second day to organize everything. It was more than I should have bitten off, given everything else that's going on. But anyway, our last episode of ADHD for Smart Ass Women, I had the pleasure of introducing you to five of these brilliant women. And I think you will, if you listen to that episode, you discovered that all of my time and all of the frenzy was well worth it. These women were all in different stages of their own ADHD journey. And what I discovered is they found reflection and resonance within our book individually. All these women generally shared their personal stories that showcased the unique paths they've walked, and they discussed the impact that our book had on them. So in this episode, we'll be talking to the remaining four women who will also share their warmth, wisdom, and community in their stories and insights. So let's dive in and see where their experiences might echo your own, or even better, help you add that missing piece to your own ADHD puzzle. I'd like to introduce you to Raquel gonzalez Lubbers. Raquel is actually in our book on page 47. It's a great story. And she is the perfect example of ADHD drivenness and how you can be very high performing and successful to the outside world. But if you're not careful, you can burn out from all the perfectionism and masking of keeping it all together. 
Raquel went through our Your ADHD Brain is A-OK program, and she is now a fantastic ADHD coach. Well, hello, Raquel Gonsalves lovers. How are you? I'm doing amazing. So happy to be talking to you about this book and all the wonderful things in store for ADHD women out there. Thank you. I love that you're an example of that really high functioning woman who no one would ever think has ADHD because she's doing so much masking to keep it all together until she can't keep it all together. And I'd love to know what was the biggest thing for you in your transformation from getting to where you were feeling like everything was falling apart to where you are today, which you just kind of radiate joy. (laughs) Thank you. Boy, the biggest thing, um, it's the change in my mind of how I view myself Mm -hmm. and the permission to fail. Because failure, as long as you're failing forward, that's fine. It's no big deal, right? So if I fail at some executive function and I can use all the knowledge that I've studied to get to where I am an ADHD coach, you know, I can use that knowledge and say, okay, I accept myself. I love myself. I'm going to be patient. This is a journey. You know, I only found out I had ADHD at 43. So, you know, being able to strategize and just love myself and lean into it. And, you know, when I think when I first, first got the diagnosis, it was all about fixing. Like, how Mm -hmm. am I going to fix this? Oh my gosh, I know. Now I can fix it. And now it's not about fixing. It's about loving and accepting and strategizing and just creating new paths, which is what we do. We're out of the box thinkers. We create new paths. So I am creating new paths that are not judgment paths. They're failing forward success paths. Wonderful. And, and again, you know, our best purposes give meaning to our past. You're helping other people have an easier time of it, right? Yeah. It's so fulfilling. It's a gift to me. I love it. So I'd love to know if you could describe the book in three words, what would they be? Self-reflective, empowering, positivity. I really appreciated the chapters, especially on how our traits can be superpowers. And then the chapter on figuring out your values and your passions and your purpose, because as we get motivated to really dive deep and do those things, I think that's where we get to know ourselves and we get to know the possibilities. Sometimes we've been smashed down in the weight of the ADHD difficulty and we forget how powerful and wonderful we are. So every woman needs to read that and remember where their power is and go for it and reclaim that. Is there a specific person or type of person that you think would get the most benefit from this book? Someone who is ready for change, ready to have a little bit more possibility in your life, a little bit more positivity. Someone who has been frustrated with the status quo of where they're at in the daily grind and wants to level up. Those are the people that, I mean, and it all, all it takes is a seed of interest. You know, you don't have to be like gung ho, ready to change. Just having that little seed of desire to take control of your life again and find your power. That's who this book is for. Okay. So Raquel, where can people find you if they want to know more about you? I am ADHDheroacademy.com. And that's also my handle on Instagram and Facebook, ADHD Hero Academy, because my mission is to help people find the hero within. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got, you know, every hero out there has an origin story. And some of them are dark and hard. But once they go through that grind, that transformation process, there's no one in this world that can't find the hero within. So I'm on the mission to help people find that hero within. This book really has everything that you need. 
because it's got the self-reflective portions where you're really digging deep and thinking about yourself, what's important to you, what are your values and your strengths and your skills and your passions, and where could your superhero traits lie? But then it also has a lot of really informative things like how your brain works. What is happening when these ADHD moments happen? What's happening in here? And what can I do about those? I love that it also talks about comorbidities because there are so many things that can come along the ADHD ride that people don't talk about. And it's like just putting it on the radar gives you pause to think, wait a second, could this apply to me? I mean, there's things that I read in here that I had heard on your podcast where now I'm diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. My daughter is diagnosed with a visual processing delay. And these things that were causing hiccups in our lives, and now we know and we are able to take care of them and move on and have understanding. So it's really like it runs the gamut. There's nothing that's not in this book that you need to know. It's the social, it's the family, it's it's just everything. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Raquel. I really appreciate it. Allison Lane is a book marketing coach for nonfiction authors. In fact, she's responsible for helping me to create my book proposal that got me my HarperCollins book deal in the first place. She's also a previous guest on the podcast. She reminded me it's episode number 207. And it was, well, we talked a lot about trauma. It's a really good one. You can find Allison at lanelit.com. So let's meet Allison. Welcome. Hi. Allison is the woman who is responsible for basically using her ADHD ingenuity (laughs) and telling a fib and making me show up for a meeting so that I would actually show up. And then you said, we're going to query agents. And I'm like, no, we're not because we don't have this and we don't have that. And every single thing I said, we don't have this, we don't have that. She's like, yes, we do. So we ended up querying agents like on the fly. And she knew that someone was going to pop up. So I picked like my three favorite people or so I thought at the time. And I sent out queries with her there watching me. And then lo and behold, within like 15 minutes, we got a response back. And then I was screwed, right? Because I had to, (laughs) I had to then create or finish the book proposal because Allison pretty much did the book proposal. The only part that I had to do were those chapter summaries, but those were really causing me some problems. The thing you ran into is that all of the agents responded on the same day. Like, great, yeah. when can we meet? And the industry average is three to six months <laughs> for a response time. Yeah. My big problem, though, was that I had to write the chapter in order to write the chapter summary. So it just took me forever. You, know? uh, you, had, to, you had to write the whole chapter in order to know what to put in the chapter summary. I think that's how our brains work. We're always so worried because of all the ideas that we're going to miss something. And so we include everything and then the kitchen sink and it's overwhelming. And part of it is because everything's important to our brains. It's really hard to figure out, okay, no, no, no. What is really important, right? Yeah. Well, what was really important was getting your book published. And that for me was Mm -hmm. the driving force why every three weeks I would email you and say, I'm thinking about you. She would stalk me. (laughs) Well, it's the the publishing process is, the, the industry is so hard to figure out. And then it's so intimidating because it seems like mm-hmm. it's secret, but it's not secret. It's just hard to figure out. But it's, it's secret true. because you typically do it once, right? So why would you yeah. want to do all that stuff? Just, you know, this is how my ADHD brain works. Like the stuff that doesn't come easily to me, like writing, it's just like, give me the answer and I'll do it. Give me the answer and I'll do it. Right. But it's kind of hard. So I would love to know your two-minute ADHD story, like how you came into even figuring out, oh, maybe, you know, how you were feeling and what was going on was ADHD. 
And what has happened if you look at from that time when you were trying to figure out what it is to today, getting diagnosed, <laughs> figuring it all okay. out? Okay. You know, I really need to create some sort of infographic for this one. Well, up until I had kids, I was a superstar. Career-wise, I had everything going for me. And after I had my second child, it was like my brain turned to mush. I couldn't remember things. I was full of panic all the time. I, I felt like my personality was changing. Mm -hmm. I, I would forget my colleagues' names and like really not be able to remember. And this is people you worked with? Yes, people I had worked oh. with for years. Oh, wow. And I would just oh, wow. look at them and be like, nope. I like, I have no idea who you are. Just, and I, I've, <laughs> you laugh because you're so sweet. But to me, it was a personal failing. And yeah. people who had respected me started not to. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Did people ask you, like, they probably didn't no, ask you, but you were probably no, thinking, like, dementia no, no. or something? This was in the South. They're too polite to do that. Okay. They're, okay. Mm -mm. They no, just, they think just it. talk about you behind your back. Oh, no. Not well, the whole South. Polite. Yeah. Yeah. So after a couple of years of that, and just, you know, when you're a, uh, when you have little kids, people just tell you, like, oh, well, that's parenthood. Well, this is not parenthood. This is, I couldn't keep a thought in my brain. I thought everyone was talking about me all the time, and probably they were by that point. Then we moved. My son hit elementary school, and he started to show behaviors that finally I had to pin the principal down and say, like, you need to actually tell me what is happening and she said, well, I'm not really supposed to. I'm like, you know what? If you won't, who's going to? And mm -hmm. she said, okay, I think you might want to look into this because ADHD. And of course, I panicked because that seemed shameful. Like, you whisper about it. Nobody will tell you about it. Which is so annoying because now we know everybody's brain is different. And my mm -hmm. brain is neuro awesome because mm -hmm. divergent sounds crazy. Great. Nuts. I don't like it. Two years later, we were still bouncing from doctor to doctor, not finding the right one. We found the right one. And then he said, you know, ADHD is inherited. Uh, and what's going on with you? And of course, I was taking notes. And I had a, my purse was like just gaping and falling all over the place. And I couldn't sit still. And he was like, I was like, I don't, what do you mean? And he was like, well, why don't you just take this little checklist. Yeah. And I went down and I got all, I got an A plus for ADHD. And, yeah. And he, he said, well, you know, you have clear signs and I've met you a couple of times now and this is what's happening. He gave me a prescription. And by the end of the day, I felt powerful and I felt like my brain was actually clicking. But it took me a few weeks before I actually told my husband. About what? Because about the doctor's diagnosis. Because I was oh, so... Oh, really? I was so embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Like something was wrong with me. There's a, there's a whole assumption, you know, and this was 10 years ago, I suppose, that like this was just emerging, that like only the kids who were like really bad, mm -hmm. or, you know, were openly talked about like, oh, it's ADHD. And it's, it was never a positive thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let's talk about the book. I'm assuming, mm. <laughs> I'm assuming you have read the book, right? Uh, yes. In fact, <laughs> I have read every lick of it. I have read every lick of it twice. I, I love this book. When I'm reading your book, it reads almost like memoir that's just making me smarter and also making me feel great about myself. Well, that, I think um, most of the books that are out there, it really is about everything that's wrong with you and that you can't do. And I just, it's so not true. I mean, we know that, right? right? We just meet one ADHD woman after another and every single one of them has a brilliance. Everyone. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm getting full body chills. Yeah. I, I feel like 
your view of yourself and your view of me help me realize that those perceptions of how you know dysfunctional or disappointing i was was like maybe a label that i accepted but now i do not mm. and i if i could live that again i would say well first i would recognize what was happening to me and i would have done something about it but i didn't know and secondly when someone said something mean to me i would say I would be able to be prepared with a, an equally sharp quip because there's no, there's no sense in that. And that's hilarious because I think you are the woman of quips. And so it is appalling to me that they kind of unquipped you. <laughs> so two last questions. Who do you think this book is best suited for? <laughs> ADHD for smart ass women is for all the smart ass women who feel like they're losing their smart acidness. Because this was me. I achieved enormous career excellence early. I mean, I was maybe like 28, 29. I would lead media relations at Pepsi, at Quaker Oats. I was with celebrities. I mean, I was traveling by the biggest expense account because I was on the road all the time. And then to see that dismantle and, and to not know why my identity was wrapped up in my ability to be the creative problem solver everywhere. And then suddenly it took effort instead of being, you know, an instantaneous thing. So I would say anybody who's you know, on the rise in an organization or they're, you know, serving a, an affinity group like the head of HR, whoever leads diversity and inclusion, whoever's leading PR, whoever has enormous pressure on because of their professional lives and they revel in it. I reveled in it. I loved it. And I still do. But boy, before I realized I had ADHD, it was rough because it was like my brain didn't kick into gear. Those are the people who need this, especially the women leaders, culture leaders, and human resource leaders who they actually control and guide company culture. So it's not just for them, but all the training, all the diversity that actually happens because you the, the person you are when you get hired is not the person you are 10 years later yeah. no matter whether you have ADHD or not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, those people can really they can improve their own lives and they can affect change for all of us yeah so true okay Allison where can people find you if they want to reach out to you you can reach me, and if, it, if you want any information on how to get your book into the world, how to launch your book, how to better yourself as an author, I am at lanelit.com. That's lane, L-A-N-E, and then lit, like literature. If you have questions, book a free consult. It's free, and I'm happy to talk to anyone. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Allison. And thank you for your efforts in birthing this book and getting it into the world. Meredith Degenhardt taught high schoolers math for 14 years. She stepped away from the classroom when she was pregnant with her daughter, who will be five in January. She also has a two-year-old son and lives with her husband in his hometown of Plymouth, Michigan. You can reach out to Meredith at MeredithMentions at gmail.com. Well, hello, Meredith Degenhart. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am wonderful. Can you tell us just like a little short ADHD kind of story in terms of your ADHD origin story, I guess? Yeah, I feel like it's really at the beginning. Um, ah. My dad was just diagnosed at age 68 this past uh, February. Yeah. And then I heard how common it is in families. And so it really kind of got the gears turning of, 
well, maybe some of these thoughts and sporadic quirks uh, could be related to that. So I went to my um, favorite resource of podcasts and typed in uh, ADHD and women and yours came up and I just dove head first. And it's been so helpful to have. How long have you been listening to the podcast? Probably about six months or so. Okay. And when the one came up about pre-ordering the book, I was like, oh, yes. I went right there before I could forget. And it was just so comforting. Um, I just keep saying it feels like you're one of my favorite aunts. And reading your book was like going out to lunch and just having little nuggets to help with all the different aspects we might be thinking of. Was there a part of the book, so you've read the book, that felt like it was <laughs> written just for you? I think one that stood out was the plan or the progress or, or the the six steps. Mm. And just you hear so much about finding your values and connecting that to your passion. And, and it just hit me at the right time. I had been trying to figure out strengths that through other um, personal development. And it just felt like, yes, this this makes sense. And having that knowledge would benefit anyone, but especially for those of us that feel like we're just jumping from one thing to the next or we're never good enough and just being really critical. So having that foundation. Can I ask you, what kind of work have you done in the past? And, and I mean, I'm talking um, career. I, I taught high schoolers math until um, I got married and stayed home to start a family and just kind of delved into the personal development realm. Did you like teaching math? I did. Yeah, it was so fun and also really challenging. And now, like, since I just started really looking into, is ADHD a possibility for me? I feel like if I were to go into teaching, it would just be with a, a completely different lens, more um, compassionate and supportive. And um, yeah, just really changing how we look at it, especially that ADHD looks differently for women and, and girls. That's incredible because, again, once we learn what this is and what it means, then our compassion, of course, goes to ourselves. But then it also extends to other people, hopefully other kids, especially if we're an educator. And so it's that huge ripple effect because we know that in order to be successful with ADHD, we just need one adult who totally understands us and is in our court. And I know that I've heard many times adults say that they remember this favorite teacher that just kind of got them. And so in this sea of maybe other teachers who didn't, they had that one teacher and that is kind of what they hung on to. And they realized that there was something about that teacher. And I hear this all the time that I sucked in school, but there was this one teacher and it was a subject I didn't even like, but because they were so interesting and so interested, I was going to do whatever I could do well in their class because they were so engaging and they cared. Mm -hmm. And yes, and I'm also thinking of it from the lens of being a parent. My daughter will start kindergarten next yeah. year and just seeing, okay, the family, how things are just presented or how we respond or react to things differently. And just thinking about my almost five-year-old yeah. and what kind of environment do I want to put her in for her own education. And so it's just the reframe of focusing on the strengths will help anyone, but especially I feel like in the ADHD mindset of we're so critical of our faults. So mm -hmm. um, just looking at not only for my daughter and my son, who's a little younger, um, but just all children of how good this can be to focus on our strengths, because that'll fill in the gaps where weaknesses may be. Yeah. Present. Yeah. Instead of the common refrain is which, you know, we're supposed to shore up our weaknesses, right? We're supposed to get better in our weaknesses. But the truth of the matter is, do you know anybody who's been highly successful or even successful 
focusing on what they don't do well and what they really don't exactly. like. Right? Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, there were so many great things I just loved reading, but it was just that idea of focusing on your strengths can do so much. Let's pour the positive energy there. What would you tell someone who's on the fence about reading ADHD for smart ass women? After reading your book, and I just couldn't wait to pick it up. I, I could go through it so quick because it was in little bite sized nuggets. And I feel like I gained the confidence and some grace and self compassion for myself after these little um, easy to digest chapters that. It was set up in such a way that you could understand the science or the technical aspects, but then it was so entertaining. I, I love like the, I called, I thought of like the choose your own adventure, like more of this story about this situation on page, whatever, of just like helping us, our minds that want to bounce from one thing to the other of there was so much humor and to not take anything too seriously mm -hmm. that there's so much knowledge but in a lighthearted way that makes it fun to absorb or easy to absorb. Because we know that we thrive in positive emotion, right? And we positively will negative emotion. Mm -hmm. And that was my big struggle, that when my son was diagnosed, it's like every book I picked up, I was just aghast at like... Uh, and the thing is, I knew my son, right? I knew what he was capable of. I knew how bright he was. And then I would read these books about ADHD. And it just sounded like, okay, just commit yourself and go stay in your bedroom for the rest of your life. There, It wasn't hopeful at all. Right. Yeah. No, this is full of, full of hope and just where to look for next. And, um, you know, the index and, and resources are just, that's what I love. I just want to seek out everything I can find. And it's presented in a way that a little bit to satisfy that initial wondering. <laughs> But then there's plenty of um, opportunity to find out yeah. more. So who is the perfect audience or person for this book, in your opinion? I feel like like it was going through the evaluation process and wondering, but then like, what do I do next? So I was in this limbo state of what does the testing look like? What is the feedback going to look like? And that's when I had a chance to read your book. And it was like, this is what might come up. And here's how to keep advocating to trust your intuition. So for me, it felt like, and I want to share it with everyone, but particularly my friends who maybe they're just starting to think that ADHD be a possibility and that you don't have to be afraid of whatever exploring that route. So if someone is listening and they'd like to reach out to you because there's something you've said that has, you know, triggered something in them. Is there a place that they could contact you? I have an email of Meredith's with an S mentions with an S at oh. gmail.com. Okay. Meredith mentions um, at gmail.com. Yes. Is there anything else that you want to say? No, I just feel really fortunate to have come across your podcast and then into this book. And it's just been like a really helpful guide and um, something I know I can go back and, you know, revisit or share with anyone else that they start to share. Because that's my passion is to share what I've learned from different podcasts and personal development. So this has given me the kind of the confidence to, to do more of that. Thank you, Meredith. Might I really appreciate it. Now, let me introduce you to Christina Tilson from Portsmouth, Ohio. You'll recognize more classic symptoms of ADHD in her. She thinks fast, talks fast, moves a lot, and has enough ADHD exuberance and energy to power a small village. Christina started out life studying to be an RN, but fell into an ADHD slump during menopause. She now works for radio stations and thinks of new business ideas on the fly. She's a lot of fun, and you can find her on Facebook as Christina Tilson. Christina Tilson, welcome. How are you doing? 
I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I'm honored. Okay. So could you tell us, oh, I don't know, maybe a two-minute kind of ADHD origin story mixed with your story? Can you give us all the deets? Um, oh, gosh. I lost my dad in 2020, um, and I hit menopause. I was ready to pull my hair out. I was, my skin was crawling. Like, I didn't know what the hell was going on. And like, I, I, I lost my word fluidity. Like, it took everything I had to get out of my house some days. And I, I was used to being a go-getter. I was, I was social. I was, I have done marketing and advertising and I, I'm on the ambassador committee for Selby Sharmi, or I, I was, I just resigned from that. And the wall I dropped <laughs> because I had to work on me. And so as part of my journey, but your book, I, so at the end of 2021, I did the wall I drop. I had the biggest New Year's Eve ever to date. And I had moved into my own apartment. I left a relationship. I had a lot going on. I decided to start my own side business. Anyway. Long story short, I thought I had early onset dementia. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't. I was a mess. I was curled up in a ball trying to figure like what is going on. So I started scheduling doctor's appointments. I was getting the blood work. I was doing all the things to find out what in the heck was going on with me. I thought for sure. I thought for sure they were going to tell me I had dementia. I thought for sure they were going to tell me I had cancer, something Mm. super detrimental. No, all my blood work's normal. Everything's normal. I didn't come out of my house. I didn't do nothing. And when I came across your podcast, I started regaining my confidence. I finally was able to get out of my house. I, I, so I started from the bottom because I had to relearn. I felt like I was on a hamster wheel inside my head, mm. literally. And, and it turns out that I was. I couldn't get the words out of my mouth. I knew I was smart. I knew I was smart. I mean, I've done some really cool things. But your podcast helped me. I've been with uh, a BAS Broadcasting. They We have 11 radio stations across the state of Ohio and cover Toledo, Cleveland, Columbus. And I'm just so ecstatic to be where I'm at. Um, I'm ready to launch a new company called Experience the Peninsula. And I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing if it was not for your podcast. My head and my heart never connected and I never understood why. Like I said, I'm back doing what I love. I'm happy. I'm confident. Finally confident, like real authentic, authentic, awkward, confident. And it's that exclusively because you connected to who you really are. You yeah. connected those things. Yeah. I think you said your my brain strength. with your heart. Yeah, my strengths, my core value, you know, just all of it. Everything, everything yeah. that you have, it's all in this book. So I'm going to the other page, 64. And it says, we don't need to search for our purpose. When we find it, we can step into it because it's always been there inside of us. Mm-hmm. I am totally stepping into my purpose right now. Yeah. But trauma and- created that ADHD created, that menopause created. And the, and science isn't showing all, nobody is showing all of that. You you have helped me make those correlations. I, mean, what, I, I listen to other people as well. I mean, I listen to um, Andrew Huberman. I love um, him. I love, I love him. He, and I'm a nerd. I'm such a nerd. But I'm embracing my brain for the first time ever and embracing my menopause I'm finally taking care of my body. I'm taking ownership of who I am. Yeah, and I think what happens to a lot of us is in order to just sort of fit in it and be quiet, the payback is you usually have to be either self-medicating or medicating with pharmaceuticals, right? To keep yourself small because it's- You're depressed. You can fit in, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, all these women out here, they're depressed and anxious and, and all of these things. I would all of these things. We have all dealt with some kind of trauma. All yeah. of us. All of us. We've all been in controlling relationships. We've all sacrificed ourselves for motherhood. 
we've not taken care of ourselves the way that we should have. Learning how to breathe. I mean, doing an intelligence report, like you said. I mean, just taking the inventory. I had no idea how unself aware I really truly was. Mm -hmm. But we kind of have to remain like that, right? In society, because of, frankly, the role that women are given. Correct. And and we're not going to change society overnight. No, you know, we're, we're, we're not. But the thing is, is that we all have important messages. And if we can all continue to share them, you're, again, I'm in awe of you and your work. And, and it just, it, it, again, I am honored to be here. Oh, we got from Book Riot. We got named as one of the top ADHD, excuse me, not ADHD, uh, one of the top self help to reviews. <laughs> one of the top self help books for 2024. And that just means so much to me because it's not yeah. ADHD. It is no. literally what I've said all along is whatever works for no. the ADHD brain works just as well for the non-ADHD brain, maybe even better in some instances, because it really is about becoming more of who you are. And in midlife, if we haven't done that, if we haven't started on that path, the natural offshoot is going to be, we're making ourselves small, so we're going to feel more anxious, and we likely will feel more depressed. We keep saying it's a movement, right? It's got to be. So, Christina, if the book were a person, what would you say to it right now? Oh, exactly what I'm saying to you right now. Thank you. Just thank you for pulling all of this information together because it's so comprehensive. It touches on everything that we've just talked about, everything. And, And it's so personal. That's what I resonated most with me about just all of it. It just because they're real women. Mm. They're real women. And I'm like, oh, my God, somebody like just like me. Like, I'm not too much. Right. Are we extra or are they just basic? basic. Right. Yeah. If someone wants to reach out to you, where can they find you, uh, Christina? Well, uh, my email address is kmwill76 at gmail.com, or you can reach me on Facebook, uh, Christina Tilson. Okay. Christina, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to meet you. All right. Take care, Tracy. So that's what I have for you for this week. If you liked this episode, please let us know by leaving a review. Our goal is to change the conversation around ADHD, helping as many women as we possibly can learn how their ADHD brains work so that they too may discover their amazing strengths. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you here next week. And don't forget, go pre-order our book at ADHDforsmartwomen.com forward slash book. Do it now before you forget so you can get the bonuses. The book is finally out. You've been listening to the ADHD for Smart Ass Women podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Otsuka. Join us at ADHDforsmartwomen.com where you can find more information on my new book, ADHD for Smart Ass Women, and my patented Your ADHD Brain is A-OK system to help you get unstuck and fall in love with your brilliant brain.